Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So just to give some context, a few weeks back, a hiring manager at Amazon reached out to me and said that he is looking to hire a data scientist in his team. He mentioned that my skill set and experience can be a potential match with the skills they are looking for and will I be willing to discuss more about the opportunity. So a few days after that, we scheduled our initial call where he explained about his team, what they do and what they are looking for in the individual they are looking to hire. So basically great SQL skills. At the end of the call, he asked me whether I'd be interested in going through the official process of the interviewing for this role, which Amazon calls the loop. You might have heard of it. Even though I was and currently am very happy at my current role, I didn't want to miss this opportunity and wanted to experience the interview, interview process of Amazon. So I said yes and then a recruiter reached out to me in next couple of days to schedule the interview as well. So in this video, I am going to share the experience as well as all the questions that were asked to me. I will also share the time-wise flow of the interview as well. Over 20 questions were asked to me and I have jotted down, jotted down all of them in this video. Okay, so let me quickly give you an overview of the interview in, the, in few seconds. So the interview was one hour long and I will break down the time distribution and how much time was allocated to each type of question. Uh, the interview was taken by a data science manager, not the hiring manager, which I mentioned in the initial part of the video. So remember that uh, the data science manager had software data science as well as product management experience. So that is important. The interview was primarily focused on testing the technical knowledge through whiteboarding questions. About two third of the time was spent on technical questions. So it was more focused on the technical part. And lastly, quick Google search was allowed in the whiteboarding questions. And if you get stuck with some syntax or forget the function names, you can use Google. Okay. So the interview started with the data science manager giving the layout of the interview. So the interviewer said, firstly, there would be introduction from the interviewer. Then I will have to go ahead and tell about my background, what my expectations are, then there will be a technical hands on, which will be followed by some high level questions. And in the last five minutes, um, I can ask the questions that I have. Then uh, the interviewer went ahead to give a very detailed introduction about their background, career transition, experiences from the past and current jobs. The interviewer then explained about the team and what they work on and also gave a few examples of the recent projects the team has been focused on. One tip to keep in mind here is this, since the interviewer had already shared the interview layout and I knew after the interviewer finishes I will have to give introduction, I still listen to the interviewer's experience, background and team's work projects with patience instead of you know, uh, forming the answers to next questions in my head. And this really helped me because I noticed that the interviewer re interviewer's recent projects are very similar to what I have been working on, which I even mentioned in my intro and naturally questions were asked on that similar experience rather than some vague leadership principle based question as Amazon interviews are famous for. So always listen carefully. So the, the first three questions which were asked to me were of very general nature. The first question was, tell me about yourself. Once I finished, the second question was more on my interest and what are, what am I looking for in the next role? Also, since I included the work I currently do in my introduction, the third question was based on that and I was asked to explain the current project and role in great detail. Now, in the next two minutes, interviewer shared that now we should move to a technical hands-on part of the interview. The interviewer mentioned that it's a whiteboard screen share kind of exercise where both of us can see what the other person is typing. 
the interviewer explicitly mentioned that it is not a live coding exercise and therefore there is no code run button right so the focus is on knowing the thought process and discussing the solutions along the way and because of that syntax does not matter and at any moment if i feel confused or forget some functions i can either ask the interviewer or even use google and the last point uh, the interviewer emphasized upon was to communicate my thoughts throughout the process and think out loud loud okay so then this table appeared in front of me and the interviewer spent a couple of minutes explaining each column and what it means. So let me explain it to you briefly because around 50, 15 technical questions were asked on it and I guess it will make more sense when we understand this table. So the interviewer called this table customer service interaction table. So basically, when a customer makes a contact through any of the available channels, a new row is added to this table. Okay, so the ID column is the primary key of this table. Customer first name column has only the first name of the customer. So two Johns doesn't necessarily mean that they are the same customer. Okay. The third column, Agent Identifier, is a unique value that identifies the agent who helped the customer in that interaction. Okay. Agent Expertise column is somewhat tricky and which took the most amount of time for me to understand and I had to ask a number of questions to understand it. Make sure if you don't understand anything, ask right away. The thing mentioned before the underscore, right? So every value has underscore in between. So the thing mentioned before the underscore is the skill in which the agent is trained on. So primary, repeat, direct, fraud, prime video, Kindle Unlimited are the skills agent are trained on. And by primary, what we mean is the agent is trained on handling the first interaction with the customer. So if an interaction is not the first interaction of the customer, then that, then that skill is called repeat and so on for all these direct fraud, prime video, Kindle Unlimited. Now the thing mentioned after this underscore is the channel or basically the thing mentioned after the last underscore because here if you see prime video also has an underscore but prime video is a skill so the thing mentioned after the last underscore is the channel through which the customer contacted so basically chat email phone etc the last column was customer satisfied gets its value from the survey so basically when a customer disconnects the channel or like you know uh, signs out of the chat or closes the email disconnects the phone a survey comes and the customer might fill it so if a customer does not fill it then this will be like this will likely be null or blank for example this okay so now based on the table, these are the technical questions that were asked to me. If you assume the table to be in CSV format, write the code to read the CSV file. Okay, so this was question four. The interviewer explicitly mentioned to use Python. I asked if I can switch to SQL in between and the interviewer explicitly said no and remember explicitly said no and gave the reason that the team uses Python 90% of the time and therefore they wanted to test my Python skills. Now remember the hiring manager said the most important skill the role requires is SQL but rest of the team mostly uses Python. So another tip here would be while talking to the hiring manager, ask two questions. What programming languages the team uses generally? And then ask separately as what the role you will be interviewing for will require the most. So the answers can be different for both of these. 
and after reading the csv file the next question was i was asked to count the number of unique ids so basically write the code to count number of unique ids and it was told to me by the interviewer to assume that all the generic data science libraries like pandas numpy and consider it to be already imported in in your code so you don't have to explicitly write import numpy import pandas import matplotlib and things like that after this point all the questions were testing my ml basics understanding and how do i go about approaching a problem so the question 6 was to predict customer satisfaction which was which is the last column of the table which column should be definitely used as predictors and which column should be avoided and why uh, i was asked to predict customer satisfaction what are the pros and cons of including customer first name as a predictor variable in the model so you remember so customer first name only has the first name so what would be the pros and cons of including that table uh, including that column as a predictor variable in any of the machine learning model then i was asked if a product person asks you to include customers first name in the model can you think of an example where it might lead to skewed or wrong results think about it the next question was if you concatenate id and customer first name into one column and then include that column in the model what can happen or what is likely to happen and can this solve the duplicate name issue so remember two johns don't necessarily mean they are same person okay after this the next question was apart from one hot one hot encoding can you think of how you can split the agent expertise column remember this column was the most tricky to understand so how can how you can split the agent expertise column into other columns which might help your model a lot then i was asked can you write the code to break the agent expertise column into two columns agent skill so remember uh, anything before the last underscore is the skill and anything after the last underscore was the channel used by the customer so can we write the code to break this column into two columns which function will you use and if you are following these questions so you see the next question possibly contains uh the answer to your previous question so here i am being asked to write the code to break the uh, agent expertise column and if i go back to question 10 can you think of how you can split the agent expertise column so you see the answer lies in the next question so if you are answering correctly there is this is another way to uh, judge during your interview whether you are going in the right direction or not is that the next question the interviewer might ask is probably the answer to your previous question so remember that remember that okay so coming back to the questions the next question was let's say all the data pre processing is done and we want to train the model now how will you treat the missing values in column was customer satisfied remember the values of was customer satisfied column was coming from the survey which the customer filled after they disconnected from the service so if they didn't fill it uh, it it is most likely to be null or blank so how to treat missing values question 13 what are the different missing value imputation methods and how do you choose between them so this question was entirely based on the previous question you can see now the next question was in this case how would you choose between mean value imputation and median value imputation again this is somewhat an answer to the previous question right so you see how this interview is flowing the next question was let's say you have an imbalanced data that is your customer satisfied column is almost always yes what techniques of imputation can you use then 
so now the interviewer is digging more into you know a missing value imputation and trying to check do you know apart from mean value and median imputation do you know any other techniques as well or not okay the next question was when will you do under sampling versus over sampling and will you do it on training set validation set or test set the next question was how will you measure whether your under sampling or over sampling technique is working or not the next question was let's say we have 1000 rows 950 have yes and 50 have no in the was customer satisfied column how will you split the data into train test and validation sets so you see last few questions are now based on class imbalance and since this is uh, since here we are predicting customer satisfaction which is basically a binary output yes or no so this is a classification problem so now you will have to you know apply your knowledge from classification problems as well as how to treat imbalanced class right okay the next question was let's say you trained 5 ml models on that imbalanced data set so such so the same data set like 1000 rows 950 have yes and 50 have no what methods will you use to measure the performance of these models so you see all of these questions are not very difficult in nature they are very basic uh, machine learning questions but now they are being you know directed and asked from and from a toy example that was initially given like that table right question 20 was if a product person looks at the original data and says it seems phone customers are more satisfied than chat customers so like it is just place holders it can be anything it seems email customers are more satisfied than chat customers uh so it does not matter but let's say the product person makes some at some statement how will you prove or disprove this statement okay so this was the last technical question asked to me and then the interviewer returned to some high level questions remember i mentioned my current project in my introduction which was similar to interviewers and uh, the teams project so the interviewer returned back and wanted to know about my recent projects my other recent projects as well as i think it intrigued the interviewer so you see that's how you can have some control over what kind of questions can be asked in the interview finally the interviewer asked if i had any questions again listening to the interviewer's detailed introduction and team's responsibilities in the beginning held me a lot i asked couple of questions based on that always be sure to ask good questions it leaves a great impression in the mind of the interviewer and usually these questions they are they tell you to ask at the end right so while leaving the interview you can or basically you get that extra opportunity and that one last opportunity to create an impression in the mind of the interviewer so make sure to ask good good questions so yes this was my entire interview and the questions asked from me in the data scientist based role at amazon let me know if you guys found it useful also you can you guys can practice this question if your interviews are coming at amazon or any basically any data science interview because mostly the questions are very basics and based and flow and the interview flows in this direction in such direction only uh so you guys can practice this question and put your answers in the comment section i would love to go through them and maybe uh, if if you want explanation on the table more to solve any of these questions let me know and i will try to explain it more so yeah awesome uh like share subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video